The Arc browser, the browser that so many people have been talking about. Critical acclaim apparently, but after trying it out for a good part of a week, I'm just confused. So in this video, I'll go over my personal experience of using this browser as my daily driver for about a week on Windows 11, as well as things you should know about when switching to it from something like Chrome for example. So with that, let's begin. Oh, and quick disclaimer, this is based on my experience as someone who uses Chrome most of the time, but is actively seeking for a new browser on Windows. And yes, I did make a video on Windows apps featuring Arc previously which covered various positives for this browser, some of which I'll also cover towards the end of this video, but this is very much from my personal perspective. Your personal mileage may vary, as well as if you're using this browser on some other operating systems. Alright, let's carry on. So before we begin, here's a quick overview of this browser, so everyone's on the same page before I go into any specifics. So the Arc browser is made by the browser company, and originally it was available for Mac only, but then it became available on Windows. One of the main features of this browser is that 70% of almost everything you do in it will be done from the side panel that you see on the left. I mean, I think in earlier versions this was literally closer to 90% as the URL bar was located in the side panel as well, but yeah, that was slightly changed. Now looking at the left hand side, starting at the top, you have the arc icon where you can manage the various settings and aspects of the browser. A side panel icon is also present which will allow you to collapse and expand the sidebar, an area for your favourites, an area for your pin tabs below that, and below that you have your normal tabs. At the bottom of the side panel you have your spaces indicator, the ability to create a new space and finally, in the very far corner, you have the archive button, which is Arc's fancy way of saying your recently closed tabs. In the top horizontal section of the app, you have the forward, back and refresh buttons, as well as some URL controls in the center of the bar. A side settings menu icon is also available, as well as the typical extension and window controls in the top right area. Though I should also point out that in this region, you also have a split tabs button present, which allows you to split any tab that you might have into halves, thirds or even quarters, which is pretty cool for the multitasking pros out there. Alright, now that we have a basis of this app and everyone's on the same page, I'll discuss my experience using this browser as someone switching to it from Chrome and things that I personally couldn't get used to or just wasn't a fan of. So first up is full screen mode. So like I mentioned before, Arc uses vertical tabs as a core part of the interface and the reason for this is to provide you with more screen real estate and in particular more vertical screen real estate. Though this is not really true. As you can see, compared to Chrome, if you look at the top section, it seems like you're getting a lot more vertical space back, right? Well, you forgot this little strip at the bottom, which if you add it together, adds another 30% of the thickness of Arc's top bar back to it. And compared to Edge, or maybe some other browsers with a compact mode, maybe the difference could be even less. Not to mention that the horizontal strip at the top in Chrome contains all the controls and tab management. We haven't even accounted for the side panel that Arc uses as well. All in all, you get a lot less screen real estate when using Arc when compared with Chrome, let's say, of a similar sized window. Yes, I do have the bookmarks bar hidden in Chrome, but I also have the side panel to the absolute minimum in Arc as well, which kind of levels things really. Now this is probably applicable to all vertical tab based browsers, not just Arc, especially if you keep the sidebar in view. So let's touch upon actual full screen in Arc, cause it basically doesn't exist. If you press F11, nothing happens, apart from this icon in the corner changing. Like at this point, what's the difference between hiding the side panel and going into full screen via F11? I just found this behavior a little bit strange, especially considering the fact that there's just no way to get rid of the top bar or the side strips running around the edge of your browser. I mean, I can probably get behind the side and bottom strips, but the top bar, I don't know, I just found this sticking around to be a bit weird, especially when other browsers have solved this problem. Like in the Edge browser, for example, it has an option for horizontal or vertical tabs. If you go into the vertical tabs mode, you have a very similar setup to Arc, with the UI strip around the perimeter and the top bar being present as well. But the moment you hit F11, all these elements disappear, allowing you to use every pixel on your screen. This might be a bit petty, but Arc does have some big claims on their website. Now let's touch upon screen. Scrolling. Another thing that's pretty weird about this browser is the fact that scrolling in Arc just kind of has different physics. It's really hard to explain, but it seems like the scrolling behavior is more like that of macOS, which there's nothing wrong with really, but it's kind of odd feeling on Windows, where you have the rest of the system scroll with one type of physics and your browser scroll in a different way. Though I will say that this could be more of a Windows problem, as OneNote, File Explorer, and Word all have different scrolling behaviors, which is something that I just notice even more now. But Arc just feels distinctly different. Alright, let's move on to zooming. Those scrolling might not be completely arcs for zooming most definitely is. I think this is quite noticeable on laptop trackpads where pinch to zoom can be quite problematic. It's hard to explain but it just seems to be very floaty if you like in the sense that once you finish your gesture and let go the page will bounce around a bit despite me finishing my gesture. Again not a deal breaker but it's pretty annoying and I haven't experienced this on any other browser. Following on from that I'd say that the browser is just confusing across various aspects. Hear me out here. I'm not referring to the vertical tabs you have to get used to or the normal quirks that 
come with every browser, but rather actual usability aspects. Like for example, if I have one of my favorite tabs open, simple enough, it's highlighted here. And when I press the control tab shortcut, it's also here. Great, as you'd expect. But the moment I go to another tab, the highlighting is gone. And there's no way for me to tell that that specific favorite tab is active just by looking at it. I mean, I have to instead press control and tab to see the open tabs and then try to find one that I'm looking for. Am I missing something here? Or is this some sort of design flaw that I've spotted? Let me know in the comments. Oh, and talking about control tab, aux tabs and startup is just too confusing. Let's start with the pin tabs and the favorites feature. Okay, so arc allows you to use pin tabs, right? Great, when it's not. Let me explain. Pin tabs allow you to gain access to your favorite links and when you close them, they're still there as a hyperlink if you like, which you can simply click on. You can tell you've closed the pin tab as the X icon on the tab turns into a minus sign as a little detail. But then the question now becomes, what's the difference between a pin tab that's closed and one of my favorites that you can see above? Aren't they the same thing in this state? And talking about these favorites, aka bookmarks, they don't act in the standard way either. Like when I open a favorite, the site loads up, but the favorite becomes a tab itself that I can navigate between. And if I want to open multiple instances of my favorite, aka bookmarks, it just doesn't work because it's considered a tab now. Now searching about this online to solve the confusion, I've learned that your favorites are actually tabs that are available across multiple spaces, which I guess kind of makes sense from that perspective. But if you frequently only use a single space or a couple of spaces, I feel like it can be a bit confusing and a bit rigid in design because this way you have to plan which of your tabs you usually carry over between spaces and which of them you don't. Personally, I think an option to completely isolate spaces from each other to act almost as another instance of the window would be a better approach or at least allow the option for this in the settings. Oh, and you can only have a few favorites, 12 to be exact, I think. If I'm missing something here, then please leave it in the comments below because this is just all too confusing for me personally. On the Zen browser, for example, which is a direct competitor to Arc, I feel, I have my tabs on the left and my bookmarks in the top section of the app. If I have a tab, I can just simply right click on it and choose to pin it where it goes to the top and it stays there forever, always loaded and ready to go and cannot be closed unless I right click and select to do so. Super simple and easy to understand. Oh, and get this, when I switch to another space, it's literally just that, another separate space that behaves like another instance of the app without having to actually open one, where each space has its own pin tabs and different setup. This makes so much sense that I think it actually might be harmful. Leave a like if you want to see a deep dive into the Zen browser. But what's even more confusing than that is Arc on Startup. When you launch Arc on Startup, everything's blank. Cool, as you'd expect. But when you press Control tab on Startup, you'll notice that the pin tabs and favorites are actually open, almost as these ghost tabs if you like. What does this mean? Does it mean that they're open? I say this because if I select one, it seems to open up and I can close it just as any regular tab. And now it's gone completely from the Control tab menu. But when I open Arc again, the ghost tabs are back. So it's not like it's picking up where it left off either. Again, I could be missing something here and this could be just part of the system underneath the hood preloading tabs, but seeing them from a user point of view is just confusing. Following on from this is tab switching. Now, while tab previews are nice to begin with, you quickly figure out that using this method is actually way slower to use and get to your tabs as opposed to the traditional instant switching that you'd find on many other browsers, including the Zen browser might I add. Not to mention that the previews, while they are just about okay in size for a single tab, if you start using split tabs, you really do struggle to see what the previews are actually showing. For me personally, seeing the previews just kind of breaks your flow, especially if you're only jumping between a couple of tabs. And if you happen to select the wrong tab, it's a case of pressing down and then navigating to it and then letting go of the shortcut again, which is actually really easy to do in this browser because you might have noticed that Arc only shows five tabs in the preview switcher, which makes sense from a space perspective. But then what about all your other tabs? If you want to get to these, you have to use your mouse instead. And if that wasn't enough, the tab positions in the switcher aren't static and the order of them changes based on which one you used last, which is super annoying as you never know which order your tabs are going to be in or which of the five Arc is going to select and present to you. And as a final cherry on top, we have accounts. Yep, that's right. Arc requires you to sign in and create an account in order to use the browser, which hadn't really crossed my mind until I reflected upon the setup experience for this video. Now, there's two sides of this argument. One side is that it allows your average user not to think about things too much and have their tabs and everything sync nicely if they were to move to another device, for example. Everything just works kind of thing. Now, on the other side of the argument is the fact that if Arc is so keen on privacy, then I think using it with an account should be an option at the very least, especially considering that Arc is aimed towards more advanced computer users as opposed to your average user. So I think the typical users of the Arc browser know the benefits and cons of not using an account, syncing, etc, etc. Oh, and this is not even going into the privacy aspects of the browser, but on the face of it, data collection doesn't happen with third parties, but Arc does collect data itself to help improve the overall product. If you scroll down on their privacy page, you'll see the details here, just so you know. Okay, so while I 
think that covers the main gripes that I have with this browser. Surely it's not all negative regarding the experience, is it? Well, you'd be right. Arc does have some pretty decent features if it wasn't for some of the confusing and annoying things I mentioned previously. Again, this is based on my personal experience. Downloading and initial impressions. Overall, the downloading experience and the initial setup is pretty good, I would say, and the UI is also not too bad as well. Though it's been a while since Arc has been around and other alternatives are also being presented now with very nice UIs, I should mention. So at this point, I think it's a personal preference thing. One thing that was interesting though, was the way that everyone who downloads Arc gets this digital card, which is a nice touch you don't see on all browsers, allowing you to flex on all your friends that you joined the club earlier than them. Colors. Now, if you like color gradients and theming your browser with them, then you'll feel right at home within here, because most of the customization in this app comes in the form of choosing color gradients for your various spaces as you please. Spaces navigation. The way that you can move between spaces in Arc is definitely very intuitive, especially if you're on a laptop using the trackpad and feels like something straight out of macOS, which is something that other browsers could really do with copying. But I would like to see something similar for those times when you're using a mouse. Overall, I feel the spaces feature is pretty cool. As for me, I feel it's a good way to have a separate temporary workspace if you need it, as opposed to having to open a whole nother instance of the application. Though I should also mention that Arc does have a feature where it automatically archives tabs for you. So that was something that you should probably also adjust in your settings if you begin to find that your tabs are starting to disappear randomly. The new tab page. Now, while many browsers have a plain new tab page that you can customize, the new tab page simply doesn't exist in Arc. You either have tabs or you don't, which doesn't really seem that illogical, but it does remove the ability to have a landing page of information, widgets, or just a nice image. So that's something that you'd probably also have to get used to, especially considering that there are a whole load of extensions that cater specifically to the new tab page. So there is that. Split windows. One really big positive for this browser was the split tabs feature, which applies both vertically and horizontally, especially coming from Chrome, which integrates quite well into the rest of the controls by simply pressing this button to reveal a drop down menu. You can then choose your split screen horizontally or vertically and is much better than having a separate window. You can also adjust the distribution of both splits via the gap in between and can even go as far as having four splits as a maximum. Well, on my screen anyway. And again, it's quite cool that you can change orientations on the fly and I think this is a big improvement to having split windows instead, for example. Keyboard shortcuts. Now, considering that Arc is meant to offer a different type of browsing experience, it certainly achieves that through the heavy emphasis on using different keyboard shortcuts to navigate around the UI. This is especially the case when you open a new tab or try to search in the address bar and are greeted by a central spotlight window instead. Some of the key shortcuts that I found to be useful are the Ctrl S shortcut to close and open the side panel, Ctrl D to move a tab to the pinned and not pinned section, Ctrl T for obviously opening new tabs, and the Ctrl L shortcut to get at the URL bar. Well, the one that appears in the middle of the screen anyway. So there is that. I mean, it's not all bad, and I really don't want to say that I won't use it again, as I'm open to trying new things. But in the current state, the negatives far outweigh the positives for my particular workflow. And when you're switching from Chrome, the less friction, the better. A lot of people have also commented how Arc is amazing on macOS, but not so great on Windows. If only there was an alternative to Arc, but for Windows. Well, I think that topic needs its own video. Press the like button if you want to see that. Now, while that was a quick look at the Arc browser on Windows, what's even better is taking Windows to the next level with some must-have apps. So be sure to check out this video here, which goes into just that. So if you want to stay in your browser, then be sure to check out this video for a whole load of useful and cool websites. Trust me, you don't want to miss them. Anyway, like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.